I think it's time for another fountain pen shootout. <laughs> Okay, so here we have my three classic slash Lambro pens and a Pilot Metropolitan as a comparison. Uh, these are not small pens. I think that's clear from this comparison. Well, let's go over every one of them very quickly. They all have their own reviews on my channel, so I don't want to bore you by going over all the details, but in case you haven't seen them, these are pens made by a company called Classic Pens, now known as Lambrou Pens. They're all limited editions um, from least. Whoops, from least. Okay, stay there. From least to more to most limited. Uh, these are not inexpensive pens. See reviews. But I really love them. They're made of a diffusion bonded acrylic. You can get it in other colors as well, but the red is by far my favorite because it is so intense and it pops so incredibly much. I just love it. So we have the LB5, which was made by Sailor. Uh, this is basically a king of pen, except it's half a centimeter longer. Mine happens to have a cross point, which is a fancy nib. If you've never seen one, you're in for a treat later. Then we have the LM1. Uh, the LM1 is... I'm actually not sure, maybe someone knows, but I'm not sure who made this pen. I mean, it's classic pens, but they don't have their own production facility as far as I know, so I don't know who made this pen. It's a little smaller. It came with a Bach number no. 6 nib uh, that Salmon of the Toronto Pen Company uh, ground for me into an architect nib. And then we have this pen, which is handmade by Paul Rossi. This is the only faceted uh, uh, classic slash Lambrou pens model I have. The facets really make the material shine in my mind. Uh, handmade, sewing silver details, and this has a Bach number no. 8 nib in medium, which was tuned by Mike Masayama, uh, because I like that, because I wanted that. So if we're going to compare them, uh, these, these are Again, not the, the, the most inexpensive pens in the world. But I am very fond of them. So let's let's try and compare them. Let's let's start. Uh, this is there is some bleed through here, but you'll forgive me for not wasting paper and not using the other side of this. So here we have the LM1, the smallest one of the three, which has the architect nib uh, ground by Salmon. Uh, this was still classic pens, so this is CP. This is the L. M1. The ink in all three is Montblanc Corn Poppy, which is a very nice bright red ink with a good amount of shading and an ink that is not too orange. This was a whopper of a broad nib to begin with and Salmon turned this into a wonderful architect. That's a lot of fun to use, even though I'm not a massive architect person, but I had a little bit of FOMO because everybody wanted architects, so I felt I needed one too, and now I do, and it's, it's a wonderful writer. But as you can see, this may not be one for uh, super everyday use, because it's huge. Very, very broad. Absolutely no line variation in ways of, of springiness. It's a, it's a somewhat rigid nib. I wouldn't really push down on that, but I don't do that anyway. Um, but of course, because of the way it's ground, and of course you can vary the angle a bit, you can get a really wide side stroke. It's the opposite of an italic. It actually came with an italic nib, which I also have somewhere, but I always have this nib on it. So that is the LM1. Then we have the LB5 quite sought after. Sorry, there are 500 of these pens, the LM1s. There are 50 LB5s, so this is also classic pens with the cross point nib. Same ink. This 21 carat. This one's 18 carat. This is another nice whopper of a nib. That was, as I understand it, made to emulate a brush. So it's for Asian characters, uh, made by Sailor. So a lot of fun because this is pretty much like writing with a Sharpie, but in a fountain pen. 
uh, great for marking except like I mean like highlighting text in a way also actually an architect nib right and I love this pen especially for bold statements I did a um, I did my signature with this and and scanned that so that if I have to digitally sign a document I can I can put that in I did that with this pen <laughs> in this ink and I can promise you my signature stands out then finally we have the Lambru pens Andy Lambrou is the owner of Classic Pens, so the company changed names. Handmade by Paul Rossi with the number 8 uh, medium nib by Bock, which you will see. So this is Lambrou Pens. This is the LB6. Now, as you can see, this is a much, much finer nib than these two, and it looks even finer, of course, next to these, but it does write more like a fine than a medium, I have found. This is a large pen, not only, oops, not only in length, but also in girth, it's a large pen. And I find it very comfortable. It has grown on me over the years. I didn't own one for years, but there's the whole story of me and Andy sitting down together in a restaurant and me purchasing this pen. You can find this story in one of the LB6 videos. I think it's my re-review video. I want to say. Anyway, check that out if you want to. And that's it. So now we have LM1, LB5, LB6. And now the real question is, which one do you prefer? Well, for everyday writing, the LB6 because of the nib. I mean, writing your grocery list with this is not really doable. And writing some letter with this is also not really doable. I have fairly large handwriting, but this is special. So, um, for everyday writing, this pen. It's a bigger pen. I also love the LM1. It's a wonderful architect nib now, very pleasant to use. I really, really like it. So, there is that. And then there is the LB5, which is a beautiful pen, and in my mind, very, very close to perfection as far as comfort in pens goes. It's the right size, it's the right length, girth, everything in that nib is an absolute bonus. So, Three pens I'm very fond of, uh, three pens that are a little hard to obtain, um, so I thought that at the very least this video would be a little bit of eye candy to those who enjoy such a thing. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, for everyday writing, the LB6. For absolute fun, the LB5. And the LM1 is just one that I, something I, you know, take to work. It's a very broad nib, but it is usable. It's usable for everyday writing. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.